finally, the humpbacks arrive in the rich, cooler waters up north. Here, the icy Labrador current turns south past Newfoundland and Nova Scotia. Gulf stream waters combine warmth with nutrients to fuel plankton growth that supports shoals of fish like mackerel, herring, and capelin. At the end of the summer, with their bellies full, the humpbacks cross the ocean once again to return to the Caribbean. Do they travel singly or together? We know quite a lot about humpback behavior in their feeding grounds and breeding grounds closer to shore, but marine scientists still don't know much about their mid-ocean lives at all. When I was young, I wanted to be a dinosaur. Then I decided to be a paleontologist. Finally, I wanted to be a zookeeper. But Dad told me we have a golden opportunity to study humpback whales in the middle of the ocean. So I started helping Dad with his project. Looking at the atlas, we could see Bermuda lies in the direct route of their mid-ocean migratory crossings each spring from their breeding grounds in the Caribbean to their feeding grounds in eastern Canada, Labrador, Greenland, and Iceland. Bermuda plays an important part of humpback history. Bermudian Frank Watlington made the first recordings of humpback whales. In the 1950s and 60s, Watlington worked at the American Naval Sonar Base in Bermuda, listening for submarines. Each spring, strange sounds were recorded by the sonar devices. It was Watlington who solved the mystery by identifying the sounds as humpbacks singing offshore. Some of Watlington's recordings were released as an LP called Songs of the Humpback Whale. The cries of the whales helped to end commercial whaling. In 1979, Watlington's recordings were also included in National Geographic magazine as a sound sheet. Voyager Golden Records and the Voyager Space Probe are carrying whale songs into outer space with other sounds representing planet Earth but we still don't know why the humpbacks are singing here in Bermuda. To find out something more about the answers to our questions, we went back in history. Whalers have settled many of the New World's outer frontiers. Offshore whaling probably began here in 1616. In the early days, Bermudians needed whales for lamp oil, for food, and the skin for leather. Bermudians were unsuccessful at capturing humpbacks until they realized that by harpooning the curious calf, which would often come to the whaling boat, the mother would not leave her wounded calf until she herself was harpooned and killed. The last whale taken in Bermuda was in 1940. The dead whale was towed to Darrell's Wharf, where spectators were charged sixpence for whale watching. By then, the great whales had almost become extinct. The harpoon gun and attached exploding bomb spelled the end of the great whales. The steam engine on whaling boats meant that even the faster whales, like the blue whale and fin whale, were being hunted to extinction. The International Whaling Commission, or IWC, stopped the hunting of whales in 1982 because there weren't enough whales to make it profitable, not because of any public outcry. Norway and Iceland are no longer members of the International Whaling Commission, and they continue to hunt whales. Japan claims it kills whales for research. Every year, fast Japanese catcher boats kill several hundred whales in Antarctica. The whales are processed on a factory ship. Despite their claims that killing whales is done for research, 
The meat is sold commercially at markets in Japan.